in this video, I will um, show you some of the basics of coding text using Qualcoder. Again, this is Qualcoder 2.7, and I'm using the Windows XE, uh, which is available from the GitHub uh, releases for the 2.7 version. I've already got this project called Test2. We've got several files loaded, so now we'll start to do coding. So select coding from the menu options. We'll go to code text. We've got two documents here. We've got no codes at the moment. We can adjust the uh, positioning of some of the windows. So that can go up and down. That's, this can go fully up. And the same with the bottom one as well. Pick one of the files. It's, when you hover over a file, it gives you some information about the files. This uh, transcript is about a student who likes to learn something in a course. So we'll make some codes about perhaps enjoys learning. So we right click in the code area, add a new code, enjoys learning. Comes with a automatic color. If you don't like the color, you can change the code color. Let's go for that just for the sake of it. And to code, just select your, your text and Click on the code. Information about the course cost. So we'll put in a new code. Um, course cost. And again, we can assign perhaps that to course cost. When you mouse over coded areas, it will tell you something about those codes. So there's enjoys learning. I really like learning new things. You can have um, extra codes over the same section of text, enjoys learning, or let's have a new code, uh, easy to use. I'll well, assign that to easy to use. Um, let, so let's say that there's something unique about internet learning or web-based learning. I'll add in as a code just for, as an example. And internet-based material, we'll just highlight Internet based material will assign that to web based learning. When we have two codes on the same spot, there's an overline and it changes to an italicized um, format. When you mouse over, both codes are listed. And as it says there, you click and press O, you can cycle between the two codes there. You can also do it through here, which is an older way of doing things. Some parts of information might be particularly important and you could use them as exemplars. Say if you're writing a report and you want to draw an important exemplar. So we can add extra information uh, to assign to a particular coded section. So I really like new, learning new things that could be particularly important. So we could add an important mark here, or we can simply press on that and press the I. And the eye bolds this section and makes it clear that this is an important code. And when we mouse over, it then has the word important there. To go with important codes, we can also use some of these additional functions down the bottom. So this is show codings flagged important. We can also highlight particular codes. So show previous coding of selected code go to that position, show the next coding of selected code. In this case, there's only one, so that's okay. And this uh, shows all codings, so it reverts back to normal. Okay, so happy to pay 200 pounds. We can add the memo for this coded section. Pounds equals English as an example. And when we mouse over, the memo will be highlighted as well. We can move through files. So if you have a lot of files, we can move to the next file. We can move to the file with the latest coding. We can bookmark. So if we put a bookmark, say here, we click on a spot in a file, add a bookmark. And then later on, when we come back, we can just click on the bookmark and go to the bookmark. So I should assign a bookmark. I right click and set bookmark or press the B button. 
somewhere within the remember word. We can then, if we're in a different file and we want to go back to our current bookmark, we'll click on our bookmark. And it's very faintly highlighted. That's where the location is of where the bookmark. Add or edit the file memos. We, particularly if it's a very long memo and want to have a good read of what's there. Select particular files with certain attributes. So if you have 100 files listed, you can use some parameters to restrict the, the files that are shown in the list. So what else? We can search for text. So I'll click here and I'll look for the word the. Um, we have options of case sensitive search or searching through multiple files. So I'll highlight that for the moment. It's already identified 13 of these. And go through. So it's faintly highlighted here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so on. as we continue through this file, we'll then move on to the second file. And there's the word there in the second file. Uh, we can annotate selections of text. So it's not, not coded, but, but if we want to annotate something for a particular purpose, um, Maybe to clarify what's meant in a certain section of text when it's not obviously clear in a respondent's writing or answer. We can memo, I've mentioned that. I'll go back to the previous file because it's got the codes in there. We can, while uh, document font sizes can be changed elsewhere, we can also change the font sizes here as well. Uh, these options here are for auto-coding with exact text. Text fragment to auto-code a segment, uh, sorry, a sentence. And you can auto-code a sentence based on a text fragment across all files. You can also use auto-code using start and end marks. And you can undo auto-coding, but only in the current session. So if you've close the program and come back into it or exit it out of this coding area and then come back into it, you won't be able to undo your auto code. Now you can delete all codes by the current coder from the current file. That was an option that someone wanted. And you can go to the uh, GitHub Wiki help page. So I'll do an auto code example. We'll make a new code and we'll color it perhaps a green color. Add new code. Um, or green D, and we're going to auto code all of these in this file with the exact text. So, files for current text. So, once you apply it to the word D, we'll go OK. We can apply it to this file or all files. So we'll just do this one for now. And D is now coded with the categories. Whole coder can structure your coding in a hierarchical fashion. So we can add a new category. I'll put category one because we can put things into categories. So course costs could go into that category. Easy to use could go there. Enjoys learning. Web based learning, we'll pop that in there as well. We could even um, change this name to. Um, category of learning perhaps. We can remove a code from a category by dragging it out. We can put a different one in by dragging it in. We can add a new category. Um, put this category inside that category. The subcomponents can be hidden and shown. So, the category can be removed and the category can be merged. So, we'll just add a new code to this category. Uh, test. Now, we can merge this into category two. So merge category into category. Sometimes this is useful. Let's move that to the side a bit. Merge learning into category two. 
and all the components are now in category two, and we can't undo that function. We can have Nemo's for codes. So just bring the delete codes if we need to, delete the green these because they're not that practical. Uh, I can show coded files. In this case, there's only one file that's coded. And this just summarizes coded portions of the files that you've coded with a certain code. Okay, so if you have lots of codes in your code tree, you can show codes like a certain word. So just click anywhere here. And maybe we, we have a lot of codes with the word test in them. So then we just show those codes with the word test. And show codes like, we'll go for blank for all, and then they will come back again. 